like I said, recruiting's been um, you know something I've been following for for a long time. But um, you know, recently I've been going to the All Poly camp every year. I've been going to the Mountain West Elite camp. I've been going to some of these camps, some of these camps, and obviously watching Utah football. And you know, a couple of years ago I was saying Utah State should have already offered this Lorenzo Faute kid or na- name X recruit, and then all of a sudden they blow up and get you know, four or five, six, 10, 20 offers. And, um, you know, maybe the Aggies have the, the opinion that, that, uh, oh, well, we wouldn't have had a chance with him anyway. So why offer him when he's a sophomore? But, uh, to your point, I think if, if I can see it and you can see it, um, you know, when a kid's a sophomore or junior, um, you know, you, I would think there would be, uh, coaches that could see it and not and just pull the trigger i think they're a little bit hesitant they're a little bit more hesitant than say gary anderson was gary anderson would say hey this guy's um kafusi or whatever name name that last name that that's churned out a lot of really good football players we're gonna offer him Unga or whatever you know and they pull the they pull the trigger and they they offer the kid when he's a sophomore i think i think utah state's gotten a little bit away from that maybe frank's bringing it back obviously he hasn't been been here very long but um yeah but it's it's definitely interesting to to watch because like you said you know in the beginning it's um you have a lot better chance of of landing a kid when you offer first or offer early rather than trying to come in late and, and offering a kid so, um, you know, obviously we got that off our chest. Um, let me get this plug in too. This podcast um, is always brought brought to you by ustateaggies.com. It's part of scout.com. Um, premium membership right now. Um, use the, the code Aggie up and you get three months free. It's only uh, it's like five bucks, uh, five bucks a month for all the premium content, all the recruiting articles, all that kind of stuff that you get um there's a promotion as well so if you pay the the yearly scout.com um or you know ustateaggies.com premium membership that's $45 you get a full year of uh, of sports illustrated so you get sports illustrated the magazine and and the online version or whatever as well um and so you get all of that content for free or included in that $45. And so when you combine those two, it's a really, really, really good deal. $45 per year is by far. Um, there are some sites on, on the scout.com network that are three times or twice as much as, uh, is, uh, as you state Aggies.com. So check that out. Um, if anybody's listening on election night or, uh, when this comes out tomorrow or the day after election night, maybe tomorrow, it'll be just pandemonium. Everybody will be going crazy. They won't want to listen to a podcast. I don't know. But anyway, Kyle and I, we're, we're having a good chat. So that's all that matters, right? Yes, sir. So, um, so kind of moving forward, obviously it's election night. I don't know if this is going to make things more positive or, or less positive. Um, but what's your election? What do you, what do you think moving forward with, with Matt Wells and, and so forth? What do you, what do you see happening and what do you expect to happen maybe, or want to see happen, I guess? Uh, you know, in terms of, uh, and I always have to say this, Coach Wells is always taking care of me. He's always, you know, done a good job with me and, and my family. Uh, and so so I, I love him for that. And his wife has always been special to us, too, and his kids. But, you know, I, 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 I've reserved judgment. I'll continue to until uh, the uh, until uh, we lose one more game. I want to see, you know, how things are held together. Now, there's a few things that are alarming to me. You know, when I look at some of the guys like Austin, you know, Albrecht and, and Austin, you know, uh, uh, Simonich or sorry, Jake Simonich. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I see, you know, two veteran guys who should be consistently playing well, who should have been mentioned, you know, potentially in that press conference by Coach Wells. But instead, they're not, uh, you know, and, and Austin Stevens is that only, you know, veteran guy up front that is. You know, I'm not saying they deserve the shout out because they didn't. They, they their play has dropped off significantly in the last uh, in in the last game, and so 
you know, when I look at guys like that or who are usually otherwise dependable, you know, playing not like themselves uh, in a situation that's literally live or die, uh, it, it concerns me um, that uh, that there might be some some larger issues at play. Um, but like I said, I want to wait to see, you know, how the team, you know, looks after they become unbull eligible. If that if that does in fact happen, uh, and and I want to see how he's able to keep a handle on it. Now, regardless, you know, Aggie fans that are currently calling for his job, uh, they they uh, they're going to be disappointed. I think next year as well because even if if things do start being righted. We're not just all of a sudden going to, you know, win a Mountain West championship or compete for a Mountain West championship, and we may be six and six again or, or whatever it is. Um, but uh, you know, to expect a huge turnaround next year to, and get back to, you know, where we expect to be as Aggie fans, I don't know that that's going to happen. So it will require patience, uh, and uh, uh, so so we'll just wait to see. But I, I do think I don't really think that he's on the hot seat now. I think that he could potentially be if uh, if he if he does lose another game because then the two goals you know that they set for the beginning of the season, which is you know go to a bowl game and compete for a championship, neither of those goals are met, um, and then it's time for maybe an evaluation. But I I still think that they wouldn't you know fire him. I think they'd put a metric on his head and say you know we'd expect we expect these results because of the you know recent decline in the program. We want to see you hit X number of wins you know, in, in the Mountain West play. And if you don't, then, then uh, we're going to have a mid season evaluation. You know, I, I would expect maybe something like that if we're not below eligible. And then if we are, I think they just, you know, chalk the season up to a tough year and, and uh, you know, move forward. But I don't know that, that we're going to have a new coach, you know, this year or next. So. Yeah, I think that's, that's well put. Um, that's, that's my opinion as well. Um, the only alarming thing is the uh, is the tra- trajectory of the of the program, and we already hashed out the offensive line, obviously. But we all know how important the offensive line is, and Matt Wells knows how important the, the offensive line is in his press conference. And I've heard him say it multiple times: football is about blocking and tackling. And is Utah State doing well at either right now? Are they blocking or are they tackling? Or are they just acting like turnstiles and twirling and letting their guy by? That's oh, the yeah. question. Did you, did you hear that comment I made about that? <laughs> yeah. People always talk about coaching, but yeah, so yeah, but you know, we, we talk about, you know, maybe a decline in offensive line play, but there, there's there's several positions that, that uh that are weak. I mean, we can't say our D line's good. We can say that we've got two guys back in Travis Seafelt and Ricky Aliafua who should be, but have they played uh, to par? Uh, I mean, they're ranked 94th out of 128 teams right now, two spots behind where our offense is when you look at total offense. So were we strong at the point of attack in the last two games? Uh, we opened like a $2 suitcase, uh, 400 yards rushing, 200 yards rushing. That's garbage. So, are we strong at linebacker right now? Uh, nope. Are we strong at safety? I like Gage Ferguson, yeah, and I like Dallin Levitt. I think he's a, a freaking beast. Or how, how do our corners look? I mean, Gray's been here for a few years, and, and honestly, for the most part, he got beat like a drum all night until he got that one pick, which is which is awesome redemption for him. But I haven't liked the way that we played at corner you know, all season long. So, I don't know if it's just a decline in, in the offensive line play. In fact, I know it's not. I think it's a it's a full team uh, decline from what I've seen so far. Yeah, it is. And and you and I, we we watch games on the field. You know, we watch practice right up front. You know, up close and personal. So we watch fall camp. We we go to sp- I don't know about you, but I I know I go to spring practices, fall camp throughout the year to a certain, you know, as much as we can, obviously we can't too much and I can't with, with my schedule and different things going on. But, um, and then I was talking to, to one of the, I was talking to Seth and I'll just give him credit for this because we were talking about, um, you know, 
the, the podcast coming up and he, he has to work so he couldn't get on. But he was just saying, yeah, I turned on the, the game from 2012. I don't even remember which game it was or it might have even been from 2013. And he just said, you know what? Oh, I think it was the Air Force game. So anyway, he said that that team is just visibly more talented. That team had so much more talent than this team this year. And, you know, obviously people are going to take that different ways or, or blame that on different things. And, and Matt Wells has, has consistently said we had guys graduate. We had obviously a lot of talent on the team last year. But I was worried about the team last year having so much talent and really sleepwalking, really just kind of uh, – they were kind of dead at times, and they were just – too too calm too um whatever they were just not inspired enough they they were not playing hard enough in my opinion and like i said that i mean the comparison between that air force game and this air force game or the air force game last year even is is pretty uh pretty stark difference you know pretty so is that so it's just an all around talent issue and maybe well, mentality as well, you think? I mean, you know, I I don't know. Hey, it's mentality. I don't I don't think necessarily it's talent. Um, I, I do think in some spots it's talent. The reason why I don't think that is because I mean, like like for example, we we've got twelve returning starters from a team that, that beat Wyoming by the reverse score last year. Now Wyoming all of a sudden turns around and beats us by that same score, and we had a lot of the same guys. I mean, their coach was even saying that. He's like, you know, they've got, you know, all the same guys returning, so this was really gratifying to win in this way because a lot of those guys that beat us like a drum got beat like a drum this year, you know. So so it's crazy because, you know, that game to me was scary for that reason. You know, if we've got the same majority of, of guys back and, and the score ends up that way, then there has to be other issues. Um, so, so I look at that and I, it works me now. Now also you go back and you look at some of those other teams. I mean, from some of those teams, look, look I'll, I'll just, I'll name guys that you'll say, you know, yep, that was a player. Uh, Al Lapuaho, BoJ Filamoyatu, uh, Matt Austin, Kerwin Williams, Chucky e. Keaton, DJ T. Alavea, uh, the, the list goes on. Who else? But BJ Larson, Connor Williams, uh, AJ, Pataili, we had McKay Brady, you keep going, Nevin Lawson. Okay, there's 11 guys. Tyler Larson, uh, Eric Schultz, Schultz, that's 13 guys. I, I could name guys at every single position, and you'd say, yep, those guys are probably remembered in the Aggie, you know, dependable, blue-collar, work hard, finish games, play strong category. Can you name even five guys this year that fit that mold? No, no you can't. Can you name five guys from last year? Probably not. It, there was just a collection, like at every position you look at, you know, guys that could that could freaking that could play that were dependable that wanted to win individual individual matchups, and so I'm going to put my finger, I'm going to point it straight at mentality uh, more than I will talent because the talent's there. But listen to Wyatt Houston in this press conference. Okay, I respect him as a player, and uh, and I also like some of the things that he's done in terms of you know calling guys and holding guys accountable this year that I've seen, but when you get asked the question, you know, what does this record mean to you? Well, you know, I think in 20 years, you know, I'm going to look back on this and not necessarily care as much about the record as I do, you know, the guys that I played with and, and the, the experience that we had bullshit. You can edit that out and replace it with bull crap. Why are you kidding me? You, you're here to tell me that you're a competitor and you don't care that you're one on five in the mountain West conference or that you're three and whatever you are and and overall and overall gameplay that 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 mentality is terrible that you won't even go to a bowl game if that comes to be are you serious that is garbage and that mentality will ruin Utah State's program so yeah that's one of our great players but to say something like that I mean are you serious and uh, we've got we've got a locker room full of guys like that that you know will sit back and, and minimize the fact that they're playing terrible. When when other guys like like you know Matt Austin different guys like that to 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 lose one game was was unacceptable to lose two a lot of us still feel pain about that but to sit there and 
and, and lose, you know, as many games as they're going to lose in the last two years and say that that's fine. That is not that, that, that is freaking diabolical in my mind. And the fact that one of our leaders is making those comments makes me think that there's a lot of people just happy to put on a 